Hey everybody, first look at a brand new thing here, kind of a completely different concept in camping, and I'm excited to see what you think about it. Hello everybody, Josh RV Nerd with Bishop's RV, down here at Ibex today, finally getting my hands on a new member of their Sweet Series. This is the first of, I think, three models that they're rolling out with here. Uh, the thing with this is, it's like a tiny house, but it's not technically. That's the cool thing about this. It is technically still a travel trailer. It meets all travel trailer codes. It's fully self-contained. They've just done it very, very differently. Um, the most similar thing that you might find out there would be something like the, uh, the, the, the Timberwolf by the Cherokee Division. One of the main differences here is that's a stick-built kind of camper, and this is a laminated job, and they're each doing a couple things the other ones aren't. And I think it's cool whenever somebody has options, so I thought it was really nice that they pulled one of these in and gave us a chance to go through here. Um, it's very different from everything else that you've seen from Ibex or Nobo. In case you're curious, Ibex and Nobo, same thing. You might find the Nobo Sweet Series, the Ibex Sweet Series. They're the exact same thing. What it is here is this model has this gigantic front bathroom, uh, potentially with stackable, capable washer-dryer setups. And we're going to see one today outfitted with a combo washer-dryer. Uh, the middle kind of kitchen living area is flex function. Everything in this, frankly, is a little bit flex function and kind of has to be. But that's the, it's kind of the interesting thing. Your kitchen is sort of your prep space and your lounge area. And then in the back, you have either like a, a dining workroom or a like a hidden Murphy bed bedroom. But instead of the normal bendy beds that you find on most of these, it's actually a 66 by 80, um, technically called an Olympic queen, not a, uh, not a queen, not a king, but an Olympic queen bed back there. But it's just a normal mattress. It just folds up and down. And the way that it does it, it's a couple steps, but it's really sturdy and stable. And of course, <laughs> I mean, on the back here, it's all decked out, baby. <laughs> but. There's even cool aspects with that that we're gonna get into. There's a couple little things that are gonna change from what you see here in this video to what you might find at the stores. Um, and at any point, if you have questions, let me know. This is brand new, there's some things on it that are weird and different. There's things that are cool, there's things that maybe aren't for you. And I'm gonna do my best to try to peel the uh, onion apart layer by layer. Subscribe if you appreciate how we go about the, uh, the clarity and the transparency and all this stuff. So, this the weird nature of this i didn't know how to go about it that's what uh, basically I, I don't know how to do how to do this one i've never done something like this really before so i figured you know what the porch is a cool way to come in and out of the camper let's go in and out of the camper that way one of the things here though is uh it has like an aggressive magnet latch on it like you have to really sumo slap that sucker and lean on it to pop it open but that's also nice because uh, you know if there's a, a heavy wind at night it's not gonna like swing open in the breeze and smash up. I just realized there's some household outlets out here. If you wanted to use those to sort of like, you remember the old days of camping when people would use the outside plugs to add like hanging lights and stuff like that? Um, you know, that would work. So, <laughs> all right, um, story time. Uh, a little while back, a friend of mine got into camping and uh, on clearance in the shop, we had a set of hanging lights that I got for him. And he was very confused. Like, he's like, wow, people at campgrounds sure are friendly. People keep inviting me over for like, you know, me and my wife for like dinner and drinks and stuff. I go, oh, yeah, that's, that's weird. Did you have your lights on? He goes, yeah, no, we've been using those things. People think they're great. Um, I got him a set of pineapple lights. <laughs> <laughs> and they were not aware of the potential um, indications thereof. So I, I just helped my friend make some more friends at the campground is basically all I did. Don't, don't yell at me. Anyway, this is a little bit different. The, it, it's like a private rear dining kind of bedroom office wombo combo. I, I've not personally encountered something quite like this. I don't really, here's the thing. I don't know if I like this RV or not. It's neat in different ways. I will say this, it's not my style of camping, but I could see it working for somebody for sure. Like for instance, you've got dual air conditioners here, but neither is centralized. Uh, so you have an air conditioner basically front and back, 
Both air conditioners also have like a little electric heater built in because this RV does not have a traditional propane furnace. That's one of the differences. In the in the front and back, like up in the bathroom, you'll see another one of these. These are like these little zone space heaters and these things don't, uh, they, they put out air. I mean, they, they do a good job. And considering you have an air conditioner and a heater dedicated right into this room, uh, I think that works very well. I think it would have made more sense to me if that heater was mounted down closer to the floor but you know here you go here's where we're at and you may have noticed they've gone with the ahsoka tano lightsaber uh white beam lighting up here and whether you're using it in dining mode or if you're uh you know you, you, you like taking in the uh the sights and the sounds of the campground in the morning you have a monster window over here but one of the things they did very well as you'll see, they really focused on privacy. You've got the blackout shades. They really box and frame everything in nicely. And take note of the fact that you do have, you see those radius uh, corners on the windows? You won't see that on the outside of the RV. So there's kind of a visual mis uh, mismatch, uh, effectively. Um, as we move into the kitchen living middle space here, I don't even know what to call these rooms, really. Uh, you've got your central vacuum system down there that like all of your Ibex models have. Now, if you notice in here, these colors look like a little bit more of a no boundaries. There's a reason for that. If you weren't aware, Nobo and Ibex are sisters, basically. Uh, not even that, they're clones. They just have a slightly different color palette about them. Uh, we're going to see a, a good example of that later in the video. Now, once again, so what we're looking at over here, this is the campsite of the RV. I know it's like, it's kind of discombobulating um uh, going about the rv in this way but to it, like when it's actually set up this is kind of what makes the most sense with it and there's that big sliding door to kind of give you uh, you know your bearings there now kind of like i mentioned in the bathroom you have an electric heater in both air units you have an electric heater it uh right here under the entertainment center you have another electric heater i i don't know the exact btus total but overall, it's got somewhere between 25 to 30,000 BTUs of electric heating. And the front air conditioner, in case you're curious, that is mini ducted, uh, where this air conditioner and the, um, uh, the, the, the bathroom, basically, that air conditioner services the kitchen, living, and bathroom, whereas the bedroom has its own standalone systems. So every room has climate control, I guess is one of the best ways I can put it. These windows also do open for airflow. They're a tilt open variety, a jealousy style. It, it almost looks like a fire escape style window, effectively. Um, so they can open for airflow, they don't open real far. And your kitchen is different. The whole RV is different. You got your places here to hang maybe some of your utensils or something like that. You know, it's very um, uh, apartment building kind of trendy design. I really do like the household outlet locations they put over here in the kitchen. There was some smart execution that went into this. There's a couple little areas I think could be improved. I'm going to hit on one of those in just a second. Um, uh, again, it doesn't have, uh, I don't think this RV, uh, has any sort of propane cooking whatsoever. Really not intended for being off grid whatsoever. This is really intended for hookups because you've got not a propane oven, but a, uh, you know, electric kind of, um, you know, convection microwave wombo combo there. Very similar to like motorhomes that I've seen with the induction cooktop above. Now, this is another one of the areas where this has differentiated itself from the more traditional Ibex members of the family, where you actually have, um, it, I don't know the cubic foot of this. It's large. I, I'm guessing by looking at it, it's closer to 14 cubic foot of cold storage the refrigerator with freezer down below giving it that kind of retro vibe you know right there the couture classic series um that is actually though a residential refrigerator but that doesn't bother me because this rv is intended to be used mostly at a destination however to keep it powered if you are traveling it, the rv does still have a 2000 watt pure sign inverter so uh you know there are uh, some travel functions that are still available there now, the TV, I think, can pivot. I don't know why you would ever need it to. And the living lounging space on this is different. I think this RV really expects you to be outside or on the deck. But if you do just want to, like, crash a little bit, you got this kind of little corner lounger right there where if you just wanted to kick your feet up, you got a pretty good spot here. And, you know, the, the views and the visibility with, like, all the window coverage on both sides of you, I mean, you can... You can keep a, a good look at everything that's going on. And in case you're curious about privacy, you're going to see in a minute how you accomplish privacy there. I, did, I didn't forget you. 
Um, first of all, though, we're going to move up into that bathroom. Now, it, uh, each room does have its own sliding pocket privacy door. And one thing I will say, that toilet is extremely visible. Uh, it's, I mean, you're, you're staring from front to back to front again. Like, if you forget to close these doors and you have that uh, sliding patio door open, you're going to be staring at the neighbors, and they are going to be staring at you. Now, once again, you do have the, the blackout privacy shades um, all through the RV. Thankfully, especially up here in the, there we go, in the uh, bathroom area. So, you, wow, they're called slow rise, but there's nothing slow about that. Uh, what was I getting at? The blackout shades there. They've done a good job to make sure you're, you're not unintentionally displaying yourself for the neighbors. Now, both here in the bathroom, as well as in the kitchen living area, you have the bigger XL vent fans, so there's no need to worry about fan upgrades. Really give them some serious kudos for that action right there. Um, working our way down, I gotta ask, what do you think about the dual sink setup on this? I, I will go first. Personally, I'm not a big fan. Man, this is not my favorite execution. Um, I, 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 I don't mind a vessel mount sink. I know some people aren't big fans of that. I prefer just a single sink, though. And especially if you, you got rid of one of the sinks, it would help solve one of the problems that I want to showcase for you here. I actually had to climb into the shower to get this. But if we uh, take a look here, if we like open up all that storage, down below those sinks... One of the things that you have going on there is that shelf. And you'll find uh, later in the video, we have the same thing going on um, in the kitchen. That means that neither in the bathroom nor in the kitchen of this RV do you have a good space for a wastebasket. I personally feel that's a little bit of an oversight. That's something I, I would like to see maybe addressed in some way, shape, or form. You have amazing space around that toilet. There's there's no question about that right there. You also have, by the way, I don't I don't think I've mentioned this so far. You have like I think it's seven foot ceilings from floor to, to ceiling panel, seven feet. So it means even though you still have to step up a little bit into that shower enclosure, you still have uh, awesome headroom up there. Uh, even if you're a little bit taller than me, like I'm a little bit over six foot, I've got plenty, plenty of head space in there. That was not an issue for me whatsoever. But if I back up a little bit, there's also this. And I love the fact the inside of this door, they made match the wall panels. That is a nice little detail. I don't think I've ever seen a manufacturer do. And if someone's done it, I just certainly am not aware of it. I've never seen a manufacturer take that kind of time, the little attention to detail. Now, you can see how this could be a mega closet. The shelves are all adjustable and or removable. And today, we are looking at one with a combo washer-dryer. These are... Uh, so, the, the very first dealers who um, jumped on board and, and partnered with Ibex on the Sweet Series here... The manufacturer included the combo washer dryer for them at no additional charge. Moving forward, the actual factory standard build will be washer dryer prep only. Now, obviously, it's capable of accepting a washer and dryer. It just from the factory won't have one. I don't know if they're going to offer that as an option or not, but um, that's the, uh, the the case currently. Uh, once again, up top here, you do have that uh, bigger XL vent fan. I wanted to get down a little bit lower to showcase that for you here. And once again, cracking open all the storage and giving you a look through everything here, you can see that this kitchen actually has a, a, a pretty fair amount of storage to it. No bigger than it is. It has decent prep space, no bigger than the kitchen is. It's certainly not the world's biggest kitchen by any means. And again, under that sink, I really wish... There was space for a wastebasket, like on the right-hand side or something like that. But that's my two cents. I don't know. Am I making too big of a deal over a wastebasket? Can you get by without one? I, I don't think there's a wrong answer to that. Just the thing that works best for you. I also, it wouldn't be that hard to just chop a part of that shelf out and make that happen either. Now, we haven't really seen a good look at the, uh, the you know, the camper from the other direction over here. This is a little interesting because it doesn't have a whole lot in, in the way of a proper living room um but if you notice here one of the things you can do if i set up my camera you actually do have this uh like lounge space that can open into an l lounge now when you do that it does get a little bit bossy in the room it does really occupy a lot of that space but it's not hard to set up it's not hard to get out of the way so if it's a rainy day and a couple of you are really stuck inside and you just want to sit down for a while well you have 
the space to do it. Remember, you also do potentially have either a rear bedroom or the rear dining space there and the rear patio, depending on what the weather looks like. So you have a couple different places that you could kind of move around. Now, something I just realized, there's no floor vents, uh, which makes sense because you don't have propane-based heating. There's no floor vents. Everything's electric. Um, the uh, This is also, as a result, that'll be fairly pet-friendly. Although, if you're a cat camper, you're going to have to find a place for a litter box that isn't directly provided here. Now, again, this room is another multi-function space and uh it's it's weird it's different it's interesting and i'm gonna have to take into wide angle lens mode to really show you how this works so the thing with this is yes it could be a very big dining space it could be an awesome bring friends over and entertain space it could also be a nice bedroom but there's some steps involved i will say a lot of times the RV industry is just notorious for putting this like cheap flimsy mechanism in their RVs. That I don't feel is the case here. This felt very sturdy, very stable, very rugged to me. Like it, the bed locks very solidly in the up or down position. My understanding is you can travel with it in the up or down position. As a result, I would probably lock it in the up position myself so that it bounces less but that's just me i base that on my knowledge of rockwood murphy beds it may not even apply here whatsoever so i want to also offer a little bit of a caution on this or, or maybe just information um the rv industry takes a lot of liberties with marketing terms and they they went really they, they, they really stress that this is an rv king suite it's not it's what's called an Olympic queen. It's a 66 inch wide, 80 inch long bed. That is what's known as a residential Olympic queen, which is neat because that means that, although it's slightly uncommon, you can like Google it and get some sheets to fit this thing. I will also say, this is one of the most comfortable mattresses I've found in any RV ever. Now, what one person finds comfortable, another person is gonna say sucks. Like. My wife and I have a sleep number bed at home, and we found out that our sleep numbers are 35 apart. There is literally not one single mattress in the world that we will both enjoy. The fact, though, is that this wasn't terrible. And, like, if she wanted to put a foam topper on her side and I didn't or something like that, like, it, it, it could work. It could work. Now... I don't use the fisheye wide angle lenses whenever I can help it. So as a result, this bedroom's a little tricky to record, but I did want to show you these handy little bedside pockets right there. I also, as a clumsy oaf, I appreciate that under that gigantic bedroom picture window, they put the uh, the little you know headboard padding right there because I'm a, I, like I'll 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 try to like adjust where my position in bed and I'll end up like just absolutely knocking myself out. And those bedside pockets are on both sides. Now I will say I am absolutely doing one heck of a butt scoot boogie to get my way around this thing. The fact is it's an 80 inch long bed. The fact is you can walk around it. So I'd be kind of curious, would you fold it up and down daily would you, like, uh, how, how would you use this thing? I don't think there's really a wrong answer. I'm just kind of curious, how do you think you'd do it? Another thing here, when we talk about road mode, it's a simple no-slide RV. You know, from the front to the back, you can access the entire thing. And I'm kind of demonstrating here. This is walking around the bed, what it looks like for me. Sorry if I'm I'm trying not to spin the camera. I realized when I pivoted around that corner, I might have made you like motion sick. But you can get to the bathroom, you can get to the bedroom, you can get to the kitchen, you can sit down and have a meal inside it if you need to going down the road. The one thing I don't know is I don't know exactly where those two chairs are supposed to store and travel down the road, but when we have one in stock, I'm sure our team can help figure that out for you. I just don't see any tie downs in here, but this might be a prototype, I'm not sure. Now what's interesting is I kind of have to go about this camper backwards because in a very real way, it's almost built backwards. Like what we're looking at over here is the rear deck of this thing. But I think uh, when you kind of see that, I think a lot of people sort of are going to interpret that as the front of the camper. Um, and I, I really suppose it just depends on where and how you have the ability to park the RV. But then again, I think there's some people who might find it very, very cool to have this thing like backed right into a lake lot or something like that. That could be very, very cool. Now, once again, if you look up top, you can see the dual air conditioners giving us a lot of cooling power with heat strips, uh, again, built right on both of those. Uh, to provide you, you know, the heating in the RV. Plus, you have those, like, dual zone kind of mini ceramic-ish kind of heater sort of jobs. 
Um, the let, let's talk about the roof structure. Of this because it it looks weird because at a glance it almost looks flat, but if you notice it actually is slanted. the The entire roof structure is slanted so that you have like rain runoff and that kind of stuff uh, all to the uh, the off door side of the camper. Now the general construction is still the same as the rest of the Ibex family, where like they have the thicker roof and floor deck construction. One of the only differences. Uh, is the shape, but one of the other only differences is this is the first time that Ibex has used dual Asdell. They're using Asdell on the inside and outside layers of the sidewalls, which normally they don't do. Um, uh, God, where do I even begin? This thing is so weird. I don't know what to do with it. Okay, so like if you're in bedroom mode, where do you put the chairs? You got to put them somewhere. Well, if it's pleasant, you can always just kind of bring them outside or you could just bring some chairs outside. It doesn't have to be these chairs. It could be any chairs. Now I was asking, is there a weight rating on this rear deck? Originally they were going to call it 500 pound rated and originally it was going to include these D rings back here. However, those D rings are not going to stay there. The factory is no longer going to include those because they were afraid that people would overload a rear deck back here with too much weight and it, it could make the tongue weight um, unsafely light, basically, because weight all the way behind the axles actually uh, negatively affects your towing situation. So they are going to remove those D-rings. You could always put some back if you wanted, but my recommendation is put as little as there as you can. Here's the thing, though. Um, in terms of what the deck is actually rated for, I don't know if you can actually really overrate it unless you just went absolutely stupid somehow, like with putting bags of concrete mix on it from floor to ceiling and even then it might still hold because if you notice the chassis frame rail extends all the way under that deck it's not like the it's not something that's built onto the back of the rv the deck is built on top of the chassis of the rv the way that it really should be it's just that the 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 bedroom and dining room wall is effectively cut short, if that makes sense. I think that's the best way I've found to wrap my head around it. I like the double tail lights. They're both down at ground level. It'd be nice if they were up a little bit higher. It is also nice that they still include that little um, accessory hitch on the back, like if you got a little bike rack or something. Now, because the steps, uh, like if, if you try to go with uh, traditional RV stable steps, you got the deck stuff in the way. They didn't go with that here, which ma which makes sense to me. I'm glad that they didn't do that. You might notice they didn't do the folding steps, like or, well, the um, the like the more ride, the stable steps in the front. That's because these are, even though it is a fully self-contained travel trailer, it is really intended for park use. Some park people like to build a deck on the sides of these things or something like that. This one you might make a small like one or two step deck, not a big old three, four, five step deck like some people do in the big destination trailers, but you can still make that happen. I want to talk about these windows. I don't know if you notice this on the inside, but they are still radius cut. They're just an exterior 90 degree edged window for basically because it looks cool. Um, it just looks really sleek, really neat, but it is still a radius corner window because that gives it some good structural integrity. Now down here, the um, uh, underbelly, it's still enclosed, still has your holding tank heaters, but there's a few things they're doing a little bit different from like the beast mode Ibex models. Um, it has kind of the same tire, so at a glance, it looks the same. It does not run on that like crazy big foot trailing arm off-road suspension, brother. Because that's not, you're not going to take this thing off-roading. You know, you're not going to hook it up behind a monster truck and go taking it down some log trails or whatever. That's not what this is for. This is a camper that, yes, you can move it, but it's really intended to, like, get there and stay there for a while. So it doesn't have a lot of extra, like, suspension dollars smoked into it that you won't get a lot of benefit from. You know, that's kind of the idea here. Now, you can see all the windows have a nice smoky glass to them. Um, I left that sliding door open so you can really see how dramatic that is. And, of course, you have either shades or those heavy, heavy drapes to kind of privatize everything off. And I will tell you, I don't think I'd want to tow it any further than I have to. Because the front end of this thing is literally an aerodynamic nightmare. Like, I, <laughs> there is, no RVs are aero optimized. No RVs are good for aerodynamics. I don't care what kind of bullet nose BS they put in some kind of brochure. It's just, it's not. But most aren't dead flat on the front like this. By the way, this is another difference that they put on these versus a lot of your other Ibex stuff. They use the quick drop stabilizers here. Uh, to give it better stability when you reach your campsite. Because again, this is really made for destination use. So they built it accordingly. 
Uh, up front, you got your drunken uncle leash latch, which I never thought about this. That is a nice spot to put your safety chains. Huh. Today I learned. Never, never even crossed my mind before. Um, you've also got your handy little kind of like cargo gearbox up here. Keep your propane, your batteries, all that stuff kind of just out of the public eye. Now, people are going to ask, well, are they stupid? Or are they cheap? Why didn't they key lock these? It has propane. You cannot from the factory key lock these. For fire code, you're required to be able to open that quickly, shut the propane off. If you decide to change those latches out and put a key lock on them, uh, that's up to you. But that's not what these are for. Now, if you're looking really close, you see there's, uh, there's three of these little hooks on both sides. Well, that aerodynamic flat front nightmare, the last thing you want is a stone going through that. So what a lot of manufacturers do is from the factory, they'll ship it with basically like a fancy piece of cardboard duct taped to the front of the camper. But the problem is the dealership's going to take that off because it looks ugly. Well, what they're doing here is they're really thinking about you. And they're including this travel cover and all the ratchet strappy attachments and all that stuff um, for the camper right up front here. And it's, it's those extra little thoughtful details that I, I personally really appreciate when manufacturers think about. Now, up top... Let's talk about solar, because that's another area where this is different from most of the other Ibex members. So your Ibexes with the fancy beast mode trailing arm suspension package, those are something where maybe you want to spend a little bit of time untethered off the grid, you know what I mean? Not everybody, but some folks might. That's, even though it's a fully self-contained travel trailer, that's, that's, this thing isn't really designed to, to get where you're not going to boldly go where no man's gone before. You know what I mean? That's for my friend, Mr. Gary Brownrig, who watches big Star Trek fan. Apparently, um, these don't have factory roof solar. They are prepped for it. Still, you still have that 2000 watt inverter because you have that 110 fridge inside, but, uh, it's something if you wanted to add a bunch of solar to it, you probably could, but from the factory by default, she ain't got none, son. So finishing up the full look at everything here. Oh, see, this is why I like getting on the other side of the camper. I've, I've literally not been over here yet. So this is new to both of us. Got your red battery disconnect switch up there. Makes sense. Gas and electric water heater right up next to the bathroom, the shower, and the uh, near the kitchen. So that makes sense. Um, and we just got done talking about solar. Right above the uh, black tank flush, you do have a portable solar plug. So you can, you could either go that route you could go the roof route or you could kind of use a little bit of both it just sort of depends on what you're looking for something else i'm really glad to see and and i figured this would be the case since the kitchen and the bathroom are all kind of shoved together it is a single sewer outlet so that is very very nice that's something where you can just hook it up and leave it that way that's that's a feature that i always kind of personally enjoy back here this is where we'd be filling our fresh tank or hooking up our city water connection that's also a little uh cold water outside utility sprayer port back there and there's one other thing i wanted to kind of show you here before we wrap stuff up if you look up top here um, you can see where it is prepped and ready for one of those telescopic removable ladders. I don't believe that is actually included from the factory, but that's the kind of stuff like we can get at our stores. You could probably Amazon something like that if you're so inclined. Um, or you could, you know, depending on what you're doing, if you don't feel like getting up on the roof of this sucker, uh, I guess seasonally, uh, consider the budget, basically build into your budget, paying somebody to climb up there to take care of it for you. And again, uh, our goal with these videos is what we call the relentless pursuit of transparency. In case you weren't aware, like you look at the background, you see something that looks awful similar, but it says no boundaries, a little bit different color pattern. They're the exact same thing. Um, Ibex and Novo are twinsies, effectively, kind of like Salem Wildwood, Rockwood Flagstaff, Sierra Sandpiper, some other examples that are out there. Uh, and uh, I, I don't know if Vicious actually carries Novos at any location, but we have Ibex at quite a few places. So. One's got a little green tint, one's got a little blue tint. Uh, which one do you prefer? Probably just depends on the color palette that you prefer a little bit more. But I'm not going to... One is not better than the other. Don't let somebody smoke screen you on that. Um, check the links in the video description. Um, if we have any of these sweet models in stock, we'll have them right on our website. I, uh, if I have video footage of that Cherokee Timberwolf that's kind of a similar concept already out there, I'll leave you a link to that too. Um, and short of that, let me know what you think and if you appreciate all the info that we're getting here for you. So until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. And I'm not looking for any sympathy with anything like this, but just so you guys know, like a unit like this, something this weird and different, it took like three plus hours to put all this footage together. You know, you got all the editing and stuff on top of that. And again, that's, that's just part of my job. That's okay. But it takes a lot. So... 
when you see, not even me, any content creator out there making this stuff, understand they're pouring a lot of their life into this. It's not just, oh, let's just go wing a camera around campers. There's a lot to it, man. So just uh, sometimes a little perspective goes a long way, you know.